The president Nun Chia, you may now Nun proceed. Chia, continue. Nun Chia. Your honors, may me. I suggest Monsieur that the questions be Je shorter que les because plus I am afraid that Alors, when the question is long, I perhaps cannot fully longues. understand or cannot uh, respond uh, appropriately. The president, thank you for your suggestion. May I now suggest that uh, our judges of the bench uh, put shorter questions instead. Council for Kyusampan, you may proceed. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Une très courte question pour Very vous demander laquelle des parties civiles euh, comptez-vous entendre euh, ce matin, enfin plutôt cet après-midi d'ailleurs, dans quel ordre en fait de ce que nous comptions faire. That, uh, two civil parties uh, will be heard first. Deux parties civiles seront entendues pour commencer. Uh, civil party to be heard this afternoon is civil party TCP 185. Somme très Judge Savokatra, you may now proceed. Thank you, President. Nguyen Chia, in the closing Question. order Chia, at paragraph 866, it states that you held uh, military roles between 1970 and 1975. Is that correct? Your Honor, I time and again reiterate that I have Je never been in the military committee. I was in charge of education. Je me suis occupé des questions within the standing committee and that's Dans le all. cadre du comité permanent et c'est tout. In fact, you had Question. other responsibilities as en well fait, as being deputy secretary and being in charge of education. Charge you also education, had responsibilities for propaganda ever since the 1950s when you came back from Thailand. Is that correct? Response. According to this, I accept that it is correct. Because I had to do the propaganda both orally and by printed media Écrit and I oral. also went to the base to Je do this work uh, among the local people. Pour des Did you have any Question. part in uh, establishing the revolutionary magazine Red Flag. De la revue l'étendard révolutionnaire. Oh, I apologize. Revolutionary Flag was the name of the ma uh, magazine. L'étendard révolutionnaire, puisque c'était le nom de la revue. Response. Réponse. 
I had no role in establishing non, the revolutionary flag. It was Paul Bott who Paul was in charge of that. Did you assist him with any of the material in your roles as uh, 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 responsible for propaganda and education? du rôle que vous jouiez en matière d'éducation et de propagande. Réponse. Response. Your Honor. As a person in charge of propaganda and education, en charge de de la propagande, I was tasked with educating the political line, the revolutionary political line, and the strategic line, and educate people with regard to the love of the nation and the people and the revolution among Cadres, cadres of all levels, from the zone de tous les level zones, to the sectoral level sector. and commune. Et no, with, uh, rather, with regard to the commune level, uh, it Au is the uh, zone and the sector committee who were in charge of the des propaganda and education things. Between 1970 and 1975, did you uh, travel around speaking to the various uh, uh, organs of the Communist Party? of Kampuchea in your role as being in charge of propaganda. Response. And 1975, I had held these roles in the circumstance that I was allowed to do so. For example, when there were times that I would be free so that I could uh, travel around speaking me to people. Pour, uh, parler à des gens. Now, I'm interested Question. to know where you lived and uh, what your public identity was after you returned from Thailand and joined the struggle against the colonial powers. Is it correct that when you returned from Thailand in 1951, you went to Sam Lot and joined the underground movement there? Response, Your Honor. I stayed, I didn't stay in one place in, uh, for a very long time for security or for secrecy reasons. Sometimes I went to some communes, sometimes to some lot, Tassign. And sometimes uh, to the east. However, my regular residential area was in Chinet River, along the Chinet uh, River.
And then between 1951 and 1953, you spent some time receiving political training in Vietnam, as, uh, as you stated yesterday. That's correct, isn't it? Response. From 1951 uh, to 1953, I received some training from Vietnam. Oui. Were you in Vietnam for Question. all of that period or did you come back to Cambodia from time to time? Uh, yes, I was in Vietnam from 1951 between 1951 to 1953, I had never returned to Cambodia. I had to be there doing the propaganda and education sessions. Sometimes I had to go down to the fields to help Je educating people on their side. Pour, uh, I had never returned uh, to the country during that time. When you returned to Cambodia in 1953, where did you live? Response. Upon returning to Cambodia in 1953, as I indicated, I sometimes stayed at one place, sometimes at another. For example, I would stay at Bang. Levia, along Chinat River, près de la in Chinit. some lot, Tassang, Tassang Kranyung. Kranyung. It depends on the certain circumstances. For example, if the enemies attacked uh, at their particular exemple, locations, then I would have to relocate to others. So I could Pour say that uh, my living place were irregular during that time. It was the time when there was guerrilla war and people would not uh, stay in one place longer. Et on ne pas très longtemps même endroit. And there was a period after Question. the Geneva Accords Après were Geneva, concluded when you lived in Phnom Penh uh, and uh, you were thought, uh, everyone thought you were a businessman, is that correct? Response. Response. After the Geneva Accord. I Genève, lived in Phnom Penh, and my occupation Penh. changed over time uh, to suit the needs of my livelihood. Sometimes I worked as a teacher, in particular during night times. Surtout, uh, le soir. I worked as food vendor or, or just vendor selling things. Uh, 
comme euh, And marchand. sometimes I worked as a clerk for an import and export comme employé dans company. une société d'import-export. The... I didn't work or held that positions or roles for long Mais je because I had other tasks. Mm. 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 In 1963, Yang Sari and uh, Selot Sa, or Pol Pot, uh, fled to the underground, but you stayed uh, in Phnom Penh. Is that correct? You are still in Phnom Penh, that's exact. Respond. Yes, it is correct, oui, Your exact. Honor. I'm interested to know how you managed to keep your uh, strong connections with the communist movement secret so that you were able to stay safely in Phnom Penh. Can you explain to me how it was that you could stay in Phnom Penh when Yeng Sari and Pot had to go to the underground in 1963? Response. Response. Hiding myself in Phnom Penh and working secretly changed over time. Avec le temps, je suis resté When I needed dans le secret, to contact quand je devais Pol Pot, contact avec Pol Pot, I would have to travel to see him at the border areas. Je me rendais à la frontière pour le voir. However, living condition in Phnom Penh was not easy because I had to do some secret work. Pour moi, parce que je devais faire ce travail en secret. I could not really blend in the Chinese immigrant community because I was afraid that I'd, I would be accused of being this and being that. Car, uh, I could not live in villages chose. because it was difficult as well. There were a lot of spies infiltrating in those villages. Dans les villages. And most importantly, villagers aussi, would come to borrow money from me. It was as if I had money to lend to them. But si moi, eu de à leur frankly, I lived near the place where Mais the Chinese fait, uh, immigrants selling je some local fruits. I did fruits. not really have proper place to live because I could not uh, uh, live in the places uh, that would not uh, be uh, suitable for the living condition and carrying these uh, secret tasks at that time. Those who were tasked uh, with doing the secret works would know very well how life, how difficult life could have been. It was so difficult. At nights, we could never have enough sleep. At 3 a.m. in the morning, we had to wake up to be ready uh, to conduct our work. Because spies travail, would be coming to arrest uh, revolutionaries at 3 p.m. so that they could not uh, manage to escape on time. That's why, as I indicated, uh, I did not really have uh, enough sleep for that reason. Pendant cette période, je n'ai pas eu suffisamment de sommeil. And you said that Question. during this time, Et while you remained in Phnom Penh, but Pol Pot and Yang Sari and others were at the um, uh, base near the Vietnam Vietnamese border, 
If you needed to talk to part, you had to travel to that area. Was there any other means of communication? Could you send written messages or telegrams? <clears throat> response. I may respond Réponse. as follows. When Pol Pot Yang Seri lived at the border area and when I was in Phnom Penh, when it comes to communication, we had to rely on the messengers. Nous des I messagers had to take a car from Phnom Penh or a truck from Phnom Penh and I would be dropped at a place where I would be received by a messenger à who took me into the jungle and all the way to the border area, jungle, for example, Office 100 where Pol Pot would uh, stay. Par exemple, au bureau où était Pol Pot. And uh, this was also a tough job as well. Because spies would be everywhere following us. So we had to disguise ourselves into different people and with all aspects. Sometimes I had to apparence. disguise myself into being officers Soit or je me business en, people. Soit un officier ou en homme d'affaires. And it was in 1970 when the coup d'état occurred against Prince Sihanouk that you finally Sihanouk left Phnom Penh to join the underground. Is that correct? Phnom Penh et pour prendre le maquis, n'est-ce pas? Response. Your Honor, Réponse. at that time, when King Sihanouk was toppled, I was uh, at the at, uh, at the school educating people at uh, the east zone. Dans la zone est. I was not je indeed in Phnom Penh Donc, at that time. Only a few months later, I could manage to find people to get me back to Phnom Penh. Ce que quelques mois plus tard que j'ai pu. So, are you saying that you did not join the underground uh, on the Vietnamese border immediately after the coup d'état, but you came back to Phnom Penh? A few à months later. Is that what you're saying? Au du coup mais vous êtes à Phnom Penh quelques mois plus tard. Est-ce là votre réponse? Response: Yes, it is. Oui, c'est exact. How long did Question. you then remain in Phnom Penh? Pendant combien de temps êtes-vous demeuré à Phnom Penh? I cannot Réponse. remember it uh, correctly, Je ne but pas très bien. I am trying to guess. Je... Je dirais... It was about four. It was for about five to six months. Je suis resté à Phnom Penh, je pense, cinq in six Phnom Penh. Did you then join the underground at the border Question. area with um, Pol Pot, Pot, Pot Yang Sari and others? Et d'autres uh, à la frontière vietnamienne? Your Honor, I Réponse. did not take refuge 
in the forest with Ying Sari and Pol Pot. Once in a while, I went to meet them, probably once or or once every one or two months, in order to report to them the uh, situation in the city and also to receive instructions from Pol Pot as to how we are going to uh, organize our party and the way forward for our party. Sometimes I went there once every month or twice or uh, once every two months depending mois, on the necessity of the situation of each uh, circumstance at that time. Cela des so you continued your very dangerous work um, from Phnom Penh uh, educating, uh, dealing with propaganda and uh, discussing the situation about once a month or once every two months with Pol Pot and the other leaders uh, near the border in Vietnam. Response. Yes, that was correct, Your Honor. Can you tell us when the uh, Office 100 was moved from the border of Vietnam further into uh, Cambodian territory? Of my own personal observation, Réponse. there was movement along Cambodian-Vietnamese border, but to my knowledge, mes the y avait land that we were operating was actually the Cambodian soil, Cambodian territory. It ce que je sache, nous did not belong to Vietnam. But uh, at that time, uh, Vietnam uh, was suffering from the uh, carpet bombardment of uh, the U.S. That's why uh, Vietnam, Vietnam had to encroach on the uh, Cambodian territory along Cambodian-Vietnam border. So as far as I know, the Vietnamese are very... Uh, intelligent, they contacted with the uh, commune chief along Cambodian-Vietnam si border and they bought uh, certain uh, pieces of land along Cambodian uh, border so that uh, their uh, people could uh, reside in those uh, areas. So that's what I, I knew and I learned it from uh, the Vietnamese uh, whom I uh, had contacted as well because they told me uh, that it, uh, this piece of land that they were residing uh, belonged to Cambodia but uh, they bought it from the commune chief at that time. But Office 100 did move, did it not, especially as the Communist Party uh, uh, became more successful uh, in um, taking land uh, and moving towards Phnom Penh. It, it moved from time to time, did it not? May I ask for your clarification? Uh, what what year are you referring to, Your Honour? Well, I don't have the years in front of me, but between 1970 and 1975, Office 100 moved from its position near to the border with Vietnam to other provinces such as Kampong Tom, Kampong Cham, and Kampong Chnang. Is that correct? That's exact. I'm sorry, uh, once again, I would like to know uh, which year you're referring to, uh, referring to or which period uh, you're referring to. I said between 1970 and 1975, Office 100 
moved from time to time, did it not? Response. Réponse. Your Honor, to my <laughs> recollection, from 1970, from 1970, Pol Pot convened a central committee meeting. Pol Pot a organisé une réunion in du comité central one village known as Bangluwea village connu in Somtok district Kampong Tom province le district de Somtok province de Kampong Tom the convention of the central committee meeting was to designate cadres uh, to work in various sectors and zones across the country that was in 1970. In October 1970. Now, another matter that I'm interested in is the various policies that were discussed by the um, Vous posez des questions sur leaders of the um, Workers' Party or the Communist Party of uh, Kampuchea. You told the court uh, two weeks ago that in the 1950s, the party strength and organization improved greatly and that you were planning strategic and tactical policy. Were you closely involved in this planning of strategic and tactical policy? Response. I'm sorry once again, Your Honor, which year are you referring to? Well, in court two weeks ago, you told us that during the 1950s, so I have assumed the decade between 1950 and 1960, that a great deal of planning of strategic and tactical policy was done. My question is, were you engaged in these discussions about strategic planning and tactical policy? Response. Your Honor, it is uh, rather long a story, Réponse. the period between savez, the 1950s uh, to the 1960s, une bien histoire, it spanned over the period of 10 years or so, over the period décennie. of a decade. I would like to inform your honors that the party had not established any strategic or tactical le parti pas line yet. Ligne stratégique ou tactique à ce moment-là. 
So, during the period between 1951 to 1957, Donc, de 1951 à 1957, Tout Samut organized operational structure in Phnom Penh. A des et Salot Sar pour des discussions. He then told us that our party had not established an independent strategic and tactical line yet. Ligne stratégique ou tactique indépendante. We still pas entirely fait. relying on Vietnam. Du Vietnam. Everything we every move we take we had to Tout consult with Hanoi otherwise that could not be avec Hanoi. implemented that's why at that time Tu Samut requested us et pourquoi, Tu Samut nous a demandé to be prepared d'être prêt to devise a strategic and tactical Line Il nous a demandé d'être prêt à step by élaborer step in order étape to par étape progressivement une ligne stratégique et get rid of the dominance and control of Vietnam. L'objectif était de se libérer du joug vietnamien. Following the instruction from Tu Samut, who is the most well respected Tu Samut party member était le membre du parti le plus so respecté Salot and I between et Salot Sar 19 avons suivi ses instructions 50 et donc from 1955 56 and 57 donc sur une période de 4 ou 5 ans We were charged with the responsibility to devise on nous a strategic and tactical line for the party. La ligne stratégique et tactique du parti. While Tu Samut was ready uh, to back up and to support uh, secretly et of Tu Samut preparation était prêt à appuyer en secret cette préparation. As for the préparation, preparation of The uh, strategic and tactical line was divided into two parts. De the first part was responsible by Pol Pot, and Pol Pot was to uh, follow, the, follow up the Pol situation Pol in uh, Phnom Penh. Because uh, he had been in Phnom Penh, Penh and he had known some officers from Pol the Pol previous administration, so he could be able to follow up the uh, development in the city very well. And for myself, uh, I was charged with a responsibility for contacting the former cadres uh, uh, following the uh, Geneva Conference in 19... following the uh, Geneva Conference In 1954. En 1954. I contacted uh, uh, two uh, two components. Uh, the first one is the uh, cadre from J the uh, Northwest of the country, and the second component is cadre from the uh, southwest of the country. Les cadres du sud -ouest. And as for uh, Paul Pert, uh, he contacted uh, cadres Pol from Pert, the uh, eastern zone, uh, namely Sao Pim. And once we had contacted those cadres, we asked them for a report of the uh, development cadres, at the rural areas. 
rapport sur We wanted to know the uh, development as well as progress at the rural areas because uh, Pol Pot was well aware of the situation that was developing in the capital at that time. And on our examination of the situation, we noted that in the countryside, some 80% of the population in the countryside are poor peasants. How do we define poor peasants? Patients were divided into different uh, categories. Landlords are not considered peasants. They are all landlords. Landlords are those who do not use their labor. They simply hire other laborers to work for them, le for example, ils working in the field. Ils des gens pour le faire pour eux, dans les champs, par And another class of peasant is Ensuite, considered rich peasant. Donc on, il la a, des a rich peasant uh, work uh, using the labor as well, but uh, not uh, uh, that much, because uh, they had the ability to hire workers or laborers to work for them as well. The third class of peasants are the upper-middle peasants. They work using their labor as well, but uh, they also hire one or two uh, laborers to work for them in the field. Uh, aside from the upper middle uh, peasant, we have middle Puis, uh, middle level uh, farmers, moyen. and we also have the landless uh, farmers as well. Et so there are different layers of farmers. That's why it was terre. quite complicated. Uh, vous savez, il y a différents strates. C'est assez compliqué. And Pol Pot uh, follow the uh, situation of the uh, different classes uh, in the capital, for example, teachers and officers in the administration. Then he could uh, follow up all of those uh, different uh, working classes uh, in the capital because he had a strong connection uh, in the city. And then uh, Pol Pot reported uh, the situation to uh, to Samut uh, of the overall situation from the countryside. And he uh, mentioned that there was a lot of oppression and exploitation of farmers in the countryside. Uh, for example, if farmers had to work, for, uh, had to uh, go to do farming, they had to borrow uh, capital from others. But that capital is bound with high interest. They had to pay back excessive amount of what uh, they had earned. So the farmers had no ways in order to uh, escape uh, from poverty. That's what uh, we reported at that time to, uh, to Samut. And aside from the oppression and exploitation by, uh, by the landlords, there were officers, for example, uh, commune chief or officer in the countryside, uh, exploited uh, farmers at the grassroots level. For instance, they mobilized uh, those uh, poor peasants to work for them without getting any compensation or pay at all. So at that time, there was uh, the peasant or landless uh, peasant or poor peasant were very or extremely poor and lonely. So it seems that they were devising a, so, a, poli a so-called policy of um, isolation of the poor patient. Une politique relative As for Pol Pot, uh, he des uh, tried to trace the living condition of the uh, file and rank officers in the country. Et Pol Pot 
lui euh, essayer de brosser un portrait well, de la situation at that pour time, les even though Cambodia was de l'armée an independent country but it was not fully independent based on the observation of the party before we devise the strategic and tactical lines uh, what were Avant taken into consideration at that time we had to take into serious condition of the real situation in cambodian society de la réalité what de la société kind cambodienne of society are we in so we were discussing and debating around this topic and we found out that at that time cambodian society was the one of mid colonialism or mid uh, feudalism by feudalism it means that it was not led by the king but feudalism we refer to those who have money and make loan uh, to farmers but they impose extremely high interest for the loan as i informed your honor earlier so we found that that it was the society of mid colonialism and feudalism there was a legacy of colonialism and the commune chief were very powerful at that times and they oppressed and exploited farmers so based on this analysis we also found that even in the city itself there Nous were also capitalists en ville but they were not a form of national capitalists but it was owned mainly by foreigners mainly the chinese uh, capitalists surtout les étrangers notamment des chinois sometimes they were called camperda uh, capitalist representing the interest a uh, represent foreign Comprador. interest particularly those importer and exporters notamment dans tout ce qui était import export at that time there was a assistance uh, from the united states il y avait aussi à l'époque l'aide américaine and they were in favor of comprador uh, capitalist qui était favorable au comprador capitaliste it was not like going to buy uh, commodities uh, for uh, business transaction but they mainly deposited money in a bank in Hong Kong in order to get uh, profit par exemple pour so by uh, taking con- into consideration all of these facts Donc, sur la base we, de we were of the opinion uh, that our society back then was a mid feudalism and colonialism we were not totally independent complètement un pays indépendant it was obvious uh, that we were living in a mid a mid um, feudalism because there were feudal capitalists who take advantage of the poor et qu'il y avait des capitalistes qui exploitaient les pauvres once we analyzed those situation We are certain at that time that we are in the middle of both colonialism and uh, feudalism. Then we ask ourselves, what form of revolution should we take? Should we go for socialist revolution or any other form of revolution? We discuss among ourselves for many days, back and forth, plusieurs jours then when this, we decided that et nous avons en définitive conclu if the if the 
real situation in Cambodia was in mid uh, feudalism si effectivement on était au stade de d'une situation mi set me colonialism or semi uh, feudalism colon, then we had to uh, carry out the national revolution what is constituted a national revolution National revolution is the one uh, that combats again foreign interference. And we have to combat against the influence of those uh, capitalists who make loans with high Les interest rate uh, to farmers so that we can revive uh, the condition of uh, living condition uh, of farmers so that farmers uh, can uh, be uh, relaxed in doing their farming and if they are in debt uh, they could uh, pay it off uh, more easily. For example, if they borrow 100, they have to pay uh, 50 as uh, interest. Then we should bring it down to 20, for example. So there was a lot of discussion and explanation over how we went about doing that. It was not an easy task. So the real motive behind Cambodian uh, revolution at that time, it was the uh, motive of national democratic revolution. And this movement is to uh, combat against the semi-colonialism. And by democratic, it means uh, we combat against uh, feudalism and uh, landlords. Et les propriétaires fonciers. That was the real motive voilà behind this movement. So we have mouvement. to understand uh, the very motive behind Il this revolution. Les motifs de cette revolution. That was the uh, second uh, reason. And the third one. Ça c'était pour la deuxième raison. Et la troisième raison. If the real nature of the revolution of the Cambodia was meant to be the revolution for the people and democracy, who could have been our enemies? Qui étaient les ennemis si on s'engageait dans la voie de la révolution Our enemies were foreigners. Étaient les étrangers. Those who were remnants of ceux the foreign in qui étaient foreign-owned regime, for example, those who still exercise power to be inflicted onto the people. And the semi feudalism was meant to help the farmers, the peasants, Veut dire que les paysans free themselves from being greatly in debt, being trapped in the very high interest rates inflicted on them by the feudalists. So we really treated their activities as our enemies, not the persons themselves. Et en quelque sorte, nos ennemis and étaient ces activités-là et pas tellement des personnes. Et comment nous devons faire face à cette situation Si je n'arrive au quatrième point, qui seraient les forces révolutionnaires à l'époque Les pauvres personnes. Les paysans pauvres. Les paysans moyens de la couche inférieure were the forces for the revolution voilà for the nation and democracy. De la Apart from that, there were other people who cela, il y avait were nationalists or who had 
national conscience des patriotes ou qui and une democracy, we did not really reject uh, their involvement. For example, the middle class peasants exemple, or the rich peasants, although some of whom may have inflicted uh, exploit or may have exploited uh, or oppressed uh, the poor peasants, but if we noted pauvres, that they could be si integrated into our cause, then they could be accepted as well as our forces. Nous pouvions les accepter en notre sein. Point number four. Where should we conduct such revolution? The revolution for the nation and democracy. La révolution nationale Everything et had to start from the rural areas, Il fallait commencer the remote area, and this has to be expanded into.